How to find your soul mate is God's will. An improved on comprehension of how God leads you to your companion. Dear friends, watch these messages from beginning to end. Listen carefully without skipping the video. I am sure that my message will transform your entire life into a blessed and beautiful one. Dear brothers and sisters, how God drives you to your life partner and his arrangement for finding your companion is a lovely excursion of disclosure loaded up with snapshots of satisfaction, wonderment, and energy. It can frequently appear to be an overwhelming undertaking to track down the ideal individual for you, yet God has made it workable for us to track down genuine romance with his direction. By looking for his will and following his direction, we can have confidence that God is driving us to the right person for us. Through supplication and sacred writing, he has made it conceivable to find enduring adoration with an accomplice who lines up with his will. God has empowered us to perceive who is on the right track for us, and we ought to utilize this gift to find somebody who shares our qualities, convictions, and objectives. At the point when we are involved with somebody who imparts these things to us, it makes it more straightforward for us to remain focused on one another. How does God direct you to your companion? It is much of the time said that the master works in secretive ways, and this is valid with regards to directing us to our future mate and our adoration life. God has an arrangement for every one of us, and some portion of that plan can incorporate tracking down the ideal individual to go through our time on earth with. Yet, how does God lead you to your companion? One way God leads you to your spouse is by guiding you through prayer. Prayer allows us to connect with God on a deep level and ask Him for help in making decisions about who we should date or even marry. Christians need to seek out God's will when it comes to choosing a partner, as His plans are always better than ours. Additionally, spending time alone in quiet reflection can help us discern which of our potential suitors is the right fit for us. Another way God leads you to your spouse is by placing people in your life who can mentor, encourage, and advise you in relationships. Whether it's a pastor, family member, or close friend, these individuals can provide much-needed guidance as you navigate the dating world. Furthermore, they can offer valuable insights into what type of person will make a good partner for you. One more way that God drives you to your life partner is through His promise. The Bible contains many verses that offer wisdom when it comes to choosing a partner and having healthy relationships. By meditating on scripture, we can gain greater insight into what God wants us to do with our lives and who He wants us to be with. God drives you to your mate through apparently arbitrary occasions or encounters. Frequently, the most surprising individuals or circumstances can lead us to our future accomplice. In this way, don't limit the opportunity, gatherings or discussions you have over the course of life. They could shape your future in manners you won't ever envision. It's important to remember that God is in charge. He desires for us to find true love and lasting happiness with our future spouse, and He will guide us if we are willing to listen. So, seek out His will in prayer and through His word, while also making sure to take action when He puts someone special in your path. With God's guidance, you can find the right person for you. Everything we said above is true. You may or may not know them. We should pray to find our spouse, need to study the Bible. We should listen to the advice of elders. But, in this regard, I feel that it is important that we look deeply into the Bible through the revelation given by God. According to the book of Genesis in the Bible, God gave men free will in the Garden of Eden to make a decision about good and evil. Therefore, God does not influence our decisions. He has given us wisdom and freedom. Therefore, we have a responsibility to make thoughtful and good decisions. First, do a self-criticism about yourself. How strong is your bond with God, and how obedient are you to His Word? Do you have humility, love, honesty, faithfulness, forgiveness, and patience? You should understand all these things well. It is futile to seek in others what is not in you. Even if all the good is in him or her you are looking for, it is useless if you don't have it. Secondly, my friends, we must have a good understanding of others. Before you start a relationship, you should establish a good friendship with him or her. Here, he or she should study them carefully without giving any hope. When we find God's desired partner, we need to know how much they are aware of God 
how open they are to God, and how far they fulfill His word. One should be aware of their inner need, not what is visible on their surface. Do not get start love affairs with him or her. Thirdly, get a good understanding of how much he or she brings you closer to God and helps you fulfill God's word. Fourth, be aware of how he or she operates in a given situation. Be aware of whether they are seeking answers to questions from the word of God or from the world. Fifthly, do they have many characters in their life, such as one character for home, one character for church, one character for work? Or they have only one character in their life that should be known very well. He or she should have only one character in anywhere. Sixth, find out to what extent he or she has the qualities of patience, kindness, humility, forgiveness. I am not telling you to look for one person, but look carefully for several people. But think that it is a mistake to give hope to anyone, or behave in such a way as to give hope. Score them for the facts you discovered about them. The seventh point is very important. Watch the video Why God Created Humans on this channel. Then you can understand about this topic. I am creating this video series with a plan. So watch the videos. You missed. So the main thing he or she needs to know is why did God create humans? They must decide to live for it. God's main will, that is, God created man to bring glory and honor to God. If they intend to live for that purpose, it is a sign that God's will is beginning in your life. This is valid for any occasion in your life. God's will is built upon the extent to which he or she is willing to do God's main will. The extent to which he and she are willing to honor, God's blessings come upon to you as God's will. His and her desire to do what God wants with desire, responsibility and sacrifice is the best sign from God for both of them to marry as God's will. For if you honor God, you will be honest. You will avoid unnecessary things. You will be an example and a blessing to others. Understand this well. This message is not only for unmarried young people, but also for both of you who are currently married and living your life. In order to achieve the blessings of God's will, both of you make a decision to bring honor to God, which is the main will. Both of you must be a sacrifice. Then your lives will conform to God's will. This is the secret of eternal bliss. So friends, watch this video again and again and study further. Comment your thoughts to encourage me and subscribe to the channel. Comment me. Know the questions you want answered. God created man to bring him honor and praise. God's will will be established in any two who agree to it. Amen.